Welcome everyone to Newton TV. We'll be exploring the fascinating world of anesthetic agents and techniques, crucial knowledge for nurses, medical students, and pharmacists alike. Let's dive in and unravel the complexities of this vital field. Today, we'll bridge the gap between understanding the theory behind anesthesia and its practical application. We'll connect the dots between medications and their effects, ensuring you're well-equipped to provide safe and effective care. Our objectives for this session are clear. We'll learn to select the correct medications for rapid sequence intubation, identify the key factors for balanced anesthesia, differentiate the stages of general anesthesia, and understand the responsibilities at each stage. Let's start by establishing a common understanding of key terms. We'll define the mechanism of action, adverse drug reactions, side effects, and contraindications. These definitions are fundamental to understanding how drugs work and their potential impact. Building on our definitions, we'll explore drug-to-drug -drug interactions, neuromuscular blocking agents, sedatives, anesthesia itself, and neuroleptanalgesia. Understanding these terms will provide a solid foundation for our discussion. Local anesthetics are essential for many procedures. They provide targeted pain relief without loss of consciousness, creating numbness in a specific area. This makes them ideal for brief dental and medical interventions. Local anesthetics work by blocking sodium channels in nerve cells. This prevents the transmission of pain signals to the brain. We'll explore how drugs like lidocaine and bupivacaine achieve this effect, providing pain relief. We'll categorize local anesthetics into esters and amides, highlighting key differences. Amides have largely replaced esters due to fewer side effects and longer durations of action. Lidocaine is a commonly used amide anesthetic. Lidocaine is a versatile drug with many applications. It's used for local anesthesia, spinal and epidural blocks, and even to treat dysrhythmias. However, it's crucial to be aware of its contraindications and potential adverse effects. Rapid sequence intubation, or RSI, is a critical procedure for emergency airway management. It involves inducing sedation and paralysis to facilitate the swift insertion of an endotracheal tube, ensuring effective ventilation. The seven Ps of RSI provide a structured approach to this complex procedure. These include preparation, pre-oxygenation, pre-treatment, paralysis with induction, positioning, placement with proof, and post-intubation management. RSI can be a frightening experience for patients if not managed correctly. It's crucial to ensure adequate sedation and analgesia to prevent awareness during paralysis, which can lead to significant psychological trauma. Let's consider a scenario. A patient experiences awareness during paralysis. What factors might have contributed to this traumatic experience? This is a critical question to consider in our practice. To test your knowledge, consider this scenario. A patient reports awareness during paralysis. Which of the following medication sequences is most likely to have caused this experience? Think carefully about the order of administration. Sedatives and paralytics are essential components of RSI. It's vital to understand their onset and duration of action. Remember, patients must always be adequately sedated before inducing paralysis to prevent awareness. Succinylcholine is a potent paralytic used in RSI. It has a rapid onset and short duration, but it's associated with unique side effects like muscle twitching and the potential for malignant hyperthermia. Malignant hyperthermia is a rare but life-threatening disorder triggered by certain anesthetics. It's characterized by muscle rigidity and a rapid increase in body temperature. Early recognition and treatment are crucial. Early signs of malignant hyperthermia include muscle rigidity, tachycardia, and tachypnea. Late signs include hyperthermia, myoglobinuria, and multiple organ failure. Prompt identification of these symptoms is essential. 
Dantrolene is the primary treatment for malignant hyperthermia. It works by blocking calcium release in skeletal muscles, inhibiting muscle contraction. It's crucial to have dantrolene readily available in any setting where triggering anesthetics are used. Let's test your understanding of anesthesia levels. Consider this scenario. A patient is unarousable, requires airway intervention, and has impaired cardiovascular function. What level of anesthesia are they likely receiving? Anesthesia exists on a spectrum from minimal sedation to general anesthesia. Each level is characterized by different responses to stimuli, ranging from normal responses to verbal stimulation to unarousability, even with painful stimuli. We can differentiate levels of anesthesia based on responsiveness, airway management, spontaneous ventilation, and cardiovascular function. Understanding these differences is crucial for monitoring patients and ensuring their safety. General anesthesia aims to induce unconsciousness, prevent pain, induce muscle relaxation, and suppress autonomic responses to surgical injury. It's a complex state that requires careful monitoring and management. Balanced anesthesia relies on a triad of effects, unconsciousness, analgesia, and muscle relaxation. Achieving this balance is essential for providing optimal surgical conditions and patient comfort. General anesthesia progresses through four stages, loss of pain, excitement, hyperactivity, surgical anesthesia, and respiratory and cardiovascular paralysis. Understanding these stages is crucial for anticipating and managing potential complications. The nursing process plays a vital role in general anesthesia. This includes pre-operative assessment, intraoperative monitoring, post-operative care, and consideration of lifespan issues. Let's test your knowledge of balanced anesthesia. Which of the following are the three key factors that contribute to achieving a balanced state during general anesthesia? Intravenous agents are commonly used to induce and maintain anesthesia. These include benzodiazepines, opioids, and miscellaneous agents like etomidate, ketamine, and propofol. Each agent has its own unique properties and potential adverse effects. Propofol is a widely used intravenous anesthetic. It has a rapid onset antiemetic properties and is used for both induction and maintenance of anesthesia. However, it's crucial to be trained in its administration due to its potential for respiratory depression. Inhalation agents are another important class of anesthetics. Volatile liquids like dysfluorane and sevoflurane rapidly induce unconsciousness. Nitrous oxide, also known as laughing gas, is frequently used in dentistry. Isoflurane is an inhaled anesthetic that provides rapid, smooth induction and muscle relaxation. It's important to be aware of its contraindications and potential adverse effects, such as respiratory depression and hypotension. Nitrous oxide is a commonly used inhaled anesthetic with analgesic properties. It's frequently used in dental procedures. However, it's important to be aware of its contraindications and potential for drug abuse. Adjunct agents play a crucial role in anesthesia. These include anticholinergics, benzodiazepines, dopamine blockers, and opioids. Each class of agent serves a specific purpose in optimizing the anesthetic experience. Reversal agents are essential for managing overdoses or adverse effects of anesthetic medications. Flumazenil reverses benzodiazepines, naloxone reverses opioids, and sugamadex reverses rocuronium and vecuronium. A patient received lidocaine viscous before a gastroscopy. Which event would be a priority for the nurse to assess during the post-procedural period? consider the potential side effects of lidocaine. A young patient requires suturing of a laceration, and the provider will use lidocaine with epinephrine. Why is epinephrine included in the lidocaine for this patient? Think about the effects of epinephrine on blood vessels. A patient scheduled for a minor surgical procedure expresses concern about pain while receiving nitrous oxide. 
What is the nurse's best response? Consider the analgesic properties of nitrous oxide and the patient's anxiety. During administration of nitrous oxide, the patient develops anxiety, excitement, and combativeness. What change in the patient's anesthesia is needed? Consider the potential for paradoxical reactions to nitrous oxide. What is the appropriate nursing action for a patient admitted to the post-anesthesia recovery unit after receiving ketamine following minor orthopedic surgery? Think about the potential side effects of ketamine and the need for a quiet environment. A patient receives succinylcholine along with general anesthesia during surgery. Which abnormal finding in the recovery period should be reported immediately to the provider? Consider the potential for prolonged muscle paralysis and respiratory depression.